know me. I'm Meg Schwann, so I'm one of our uh, the SSC co-chairs. David Trilling is my other half on this. Um, so we thought we'd just, you know, we blasted you with everything about LSST. We figured we'd actually get you up to speed on all the emails you might not be reading um, that we send you monthly. Um, and what we've sort of been doing in the last few years and what sort of the point of getting you all in a room is. Um, so we, there wasn't a lot about this, but I wanted to put this up. So Lynn has made this using all that OPSIM and MAF framework that she talked about was, what are we actually getting from LSST in terms of yield? So, you know, it's, it's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of near-Earth asteroids. You know, I can't even fathom the number of MAMO asteroids. Um, thinking at, you know, 40,000 KBOs, um, these are an, an even, you know, at least 10 interstellar objects, and that's probably on the like low range. Um, it, these are huge numbers for all of us, and I think we're doing now in terms of order of magnitude more science in terms of objects. I mean, we only know of what in a couple of 2,000 <laughs> KBOs with good orbits in the Minor Planet Center, and so having 40,000 to play with, I think that's it's. I, I can't I can't wrap my head around it. Um, so my worst nightmare is that we will not be ready for this when LSST starts online. Um, so I guess the thing that I, I feel like the SSE is trying to do is to get us as a community to get to the point where we're ready to go on day one, that when Mary starts sending us objects, we, we are ready and off to the races. Um, it really is coming. I think as a grad student, I was like, oh yeah, this thing that's coming in like 2022, that was like, you know, that's a long way off. And now it's 2018, and so 2022 is not that far away. And so although it's still being built, the decisions are being made now that if we don't join that conversation, we will not get the things that we need, or we will only get some of them. And so like now is the time to actually be thinking about what do we need for LSST science so that we can defend that when people come and want to do cadence decisions because the variable star people and the supernova and the transients people will come up with their own metrics and needs. And if they're louder and have a, a very strong science case and we haven't gotten ourselves together, they're gonna they're gonna win. Right. And so we want to make sure that we're her and that things that might significantly hurt our science don't happen. And that if there's ways we can do even better science with LSST, that we, we make that known now. And so I think that's really I think where the SSC has been trying to go in the last year or two. So I stole this from Chuck Lather's talk at the all hands meeting last year of like where things are heading, right? So it's it's not that far away in terms of the telescope's going to be there, you know, in it's getting there, right? We saw her, we saw that they're 80 percent complete that we're getting there, and that you know by 2021 there's going to be the science verification survey. So it's really not that far off anymore. This is not the you know it looks like a structure, but it's also you know, it will be starting soon. So now's the time to sort of finish doing that planning. So in terms of the SSC, um, we are broken into the two co-chairs. Uh, we're also broken into working groups. So this could have been divided out in many different ways, but the majority vote was that we should go with populations. So we have, and also to have a software infrastructure group that there are people that are really interested in writing pipelines or other, uh, any of those added user data products that there's a group that they can kind of work together. Um, so a couple of our working group leads are here, so I'll just let them raise their hand. So there's one. Now there's more. There we go. And then uh, <laughs> uh, Matt Holman's going to be coming later as well. So, and then also Wes Fraser is the LSST uh, UK solar system point of contact. So if you're in LSST UK, you probably interact a little bit more with Wes um, as well. So if you're not in one of these working groups, you can join any of these working groups. Um, and if you have noticed, they've been sent, starting to send more and more emails as we're sort of getting more up to speed. Um, one of the things that the working groups have done is to create our science roadmap. So if we're going to defend any of the choices that we need, we have to know what science we want. And so last year's sort of effort was through the working groups to come up with these are the top priorities in order. And it's a bullet point list. It's, you know, it's not long, there's not tons of text in terms of actual of uh, what the science priorities are. But every work, every subject area, every population wanted number of objects was their highest priority, that you would sacrifice other things in the LSST survey to get the largest number of objects. And so those are the things that we need to know to be able to sort of write those MAFs and address these, these white papers. So again, you know, why do we need that that science roadmap? Is that now I've got here's what your 
highest sciences. Here's what's a little bit lower. Here's what we might be willing to trade on to get those top things. So the next step has been, and the working group leads have been really trying to push this is, yes, you've told me that number of objects is what you need, or <clears throat> we want good fidelity light curves or astrometry, but what does that actually mean? So going from that to sort of the MAF framework, and we're calling them quantitative measures. So what does it mean to be good at identifying planet nine or testing the planet nine hypothesis? Is that square coverage on the sky? Is that a number of objects that are at distant orbits based on, we assume, a population? So coming up with that in words, so that then either we can get some help on how do we code that, or then actually be able to write that metric. So that's what we've been sort of working on now. Um, the, uh, NEO working group has sort of solidified theirs. The other working groups are trying to get there. So respond to those emails. So you have ideas because you're in this room about what you want LSST to do. So it'd be really helpful for you to engage in those conversations. And if it's just looking at what the working group leads to send out, but commenting and helping us with that because that's sort of where we are right now. Um, so the other thing that went out is uh, we've been looking at is what should LSST provide? And so uh, we've been looking at <laughs> what kind of, in terms of data structures, but also what kind of parameter space. So one thing that wasn't described was whether these were heliocentric or baricentric. And when we put the poll out, it was kind of split even, and you could tell the inner solar people wanted heliocentric and the outer solar system wanted baricentric. And then we didn't really have a good reason for both, but everyone looked, if you could do both, give us both. We gave that to Mario, and he was like heliocentric, because it makes sense that there's sort of a give us both or one or the other was pretty split. So if we want barycentric coordinate uh, parameters for orbits, that's a, something somebody could write here. So Matt Holman said he could do it in two hours, so maybe that can be one of the projects um, to have that ready to go so we have orbits in barycentric if you want that. Um, the other thing is that I've been sending out this poll for whether and what, what kind of things do you want in the structure. And so 13 people responded to that, yet there are 22 people at least in this room. And so I just want to comment on that, that the reason we're sending these out is to get the feedback. Because there's sitting in a conference and having people yell at us about different parameters isn't helpful. Um, so these are the ways we're going to decide these decisions. So, do, so 13 people gave their input. On the next time we have a poll, if there's something that's important to you, respond. <laughs> because that's the way we're going to be able to give input. Because there's just too many of us to get us all in a room together. And so what we asked in this poll was not only why do I, you know, do you want X or Y, but why? <laughs> and so the why had to be just as strong as the desire to have something. So for example, for there's two moids to find in the data structure, but it doesn't say what planets, and it doesn't say, so we assume it might be Earth and Jupiter, but they did not get structure. Just yeah, just Earth, but there's one and two, so nobody knew what yeah, there were two. Yeah, two. so. Right, but so do we need one? Is there a strong case for another? And so the answer was not really, that there's a desire to have Jupiter, but it wasn't strong enough in the arguments of why it absolutely needs to be calculated by, F, by LSST project. But that's something that the SSC could do. So that's a thing that could be done in the sprint or something that we could get from other areas that are already producing it. Like JPL already provides that for all objects that are, are, are in the Minor Planet Center. So maybe we don't need to get that out of project, for example. Same thing for that. the desire was to make sure we have heliocentric distance for every detection of an object. So giving that back to project and seeing if they can handle that and how would, where would they store that. Um, same thing about the alert stream was that, especially for cometary activity, that group really wanted to see multiple photometric apertures because the argument being, if we're all going to be sort of going back to the pixel level and doing this again and again, well, projects already at pixel level, it wouldn't cost very much more for them to add maybe a few apertures. So that feedback's going to, to project, and so maybe this will be implemented. Um, so as Lynn sort of talked about, the observing strategy isn't set. So sort of, again, that, that observing strategy is sort of paper. Um, and for us, sort of, this is um, what with Beth Woman put up at the AAS meeting that, you know, the summer of 2018, that call went out, and so that by, you know, that this is really going to that sort of advisory council to take all that information, all those white papers, all those metrics, all the results from the simulations, and decide on, on what would be the final strategy sort of recommended after that. So I want to comment that, that we have to defend the northern ecliptic spur. 
Nothing that was in these plots is guaranteed. And so for us, we really are going to have to write that white paper to defend why we need that amount of time. Because there's probably 10%, maybe 20% of time in the L in uh, LSST observing to all of these mini surveys. That's a lot of sky to cover. And so we're the only people really asking for that. And so we're going to have to write that paper in November to say, why do we need the Northern Ecliptic Spur? But same thing, everything from, should there be two snacks taken on a single night um, for each observation? Uh, so should there be that two observations combined or is it okay to have one? Because if you did one observation, um, and, and instead of doing these two sort of snaps, uh, that would save a lot of time and you'd be able to do more sky. So all these arguments need to go in there. Same thing about, it does say in the call that uh, a single observation could happen on a night. We've asked for, the baseline is that there would be two for moving object detection. That should be a requirement of the software, but we probably want to respond to that and say, by the way, here are the science reasons for why we also want that, to strengthen that case. And so all of this has to happen this year because these are due in November. So that's why we're here is to start working on sort of, again, both getting up on software, understanding and thinking about these metrics, as well as all these other things that are now sort of data products that maybe we need to start making as a, as a community that aren't going to come from projects. And to, to sort of think about how do we attack and address these, 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 uh, this, these white papers. So the things that we sort of came up with in sort of the working group leads call was the deep drilling field. So David Trilling is going to take that on. I'm going to lead the Northern Ecliptic Spur, at least try to gather a bunch of people to sort of drive that paper for November. Defense of two objects in the field per night. Also in what filter? Do we care? Do we need it to be in the same filter? Those things we need to comment on. Those, again, those two snaps per observation, or is one snap good enough? Rolling cadence, are we for that? Are we against that? Um, and so all of that is up for grabs in this sort of very 30-page document um, that was issued last week. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Do we already have metrics for all those? No. Because, no, because we haven't had that. So we have a, we have a roadmap now, and this is what our priorities are, but we don't have a met, we haven't written as a, as a collaboration metrics to say, this is what we, this satisfies our, our science case. So if it's like Planet Nine, making sure we get Planet Nine, that's not written to MIF. Lynn's written a lot of metrics, but they're not necessarily the metric, it's not necessarily our metric for what we're calling a, a survey of success. Yeah, I, I mean, I think what, the, the, a lot of these, if, if it really does come down to the primary goal is just metrics. that you could you could use metrics which are available, right? The dis discovery criteria of stuff. But what's missing is a support for like this is the number, the completeness we need. Um, so, so it's kind of like the, the final figure of merit that as a collaboration, you can, you can justify and come up with. Whereas one person is kind of like, I can say, oh, well, I think we should have this, but. For example, for Planet Nine, that's not in, that is not in Lynn's metrics. So if it's that we want to rule out the Planet Nine hypothesis or rule it in, well, you can take a population of objects, right, and say, well, this is what Planet Nine should do, and we would need to find them, and they would be here, and oh, look, we would miss them if we didn't do this or whatever. But we have, so the general Kuiper Belt population is currently in there, right, for example. Well, well, so like, I, so, so like, like I was trying to uh, lay out, but it's probably useful to think of the input populations and the metrics. Like, the metrics are really basically a piece of code that you can use for whatever you need. You can put in different input populations, and then what you're really talking about here is, is using those to quantify a particular science case, and that science case has to be. And, and can I make one, um, one, one it's, it's sort of a nitpicky thing you're saying, but I would love it if we would talk about these as support for something, rather than like defense of, just because I think that that's, that's really what we're, I like I said, it's a super nitpicky kind of thing, and it's just it's a different attitude, right? So I guess, yeah, the way I want to use defense is that I, I, I don't want to assume it's a given. It is not a given project is giving us this, where every right. simulation has had it, and so that's why I'm like, we have to defend it, because it's not the project has said, yes, we're doing this, 
So therefore, it's that project has said, here's a bunch of simulations we, we're going, and this might be, but now that's all up for grabs. So, yeah. I mean, a better word is maybe for support or to, yeah. to argue I mean, for. I, I, think it's, it's, I think it's reasonable to say support for it because it's like, why is this good for us? Instead of thinking, oh, well, that's, it's, it's a change, so I, I think the old way was better, but like, what's the support for it? Um, and I think that that really comes in when you think about the North Bay Cup Square. I do think that obviously like it's it's very important for lots of our sort of and the support there is, is good. I thought Darren um, raised a really good point like how much time do you actually need to cover on the North Bay Cup Square? Currently, observations for the North Bay Cup Square are running to Bay, and so you end up with a certain number of observations that are you know. Um, Maybe you could you can you could do all the science you want to do with a smaller total number of observations. Or or less filters. But again, we don't know that because we don't have the input from the community. So if the community said we only care about sky coverage and we would take two filters or these three would give us a lot of science, but we don't need to get the ones that were planned in simulations. But that's gotta come out of us. Right. We have to write that and agree that that's what we want to do and why we're picking those filters. So do we need GRI-Z or yeah. can we do two filters? And that's not 100% clear. Or like we would, the worst case scenario would be like, just take one. And that's, you know, that I think is up for us to think about and also be able to look at what, what we get out of these simulations. That's sort of things we need to write or at least write up for November. Harry, you want to comment? I think it's everyone.